Nemes. Such an introduction. <laughs> I again, as I always do, give all praise to God for for life. This is a it's a dream that I knew would happen in reality. I think you know when or how I know different then I knew that the King Holiday in the United States celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday as a national holiday. A day that we remember the lives of all that have lived and died for the oneness of all people as did he and as did many people. As a little boy at five years old and six years old when I heard about this man who was going around trying to make things better for black people and wanting for the rights for all people to be recognized and respected. Equality. As I remember as a little child, boy, when I was growing up, I listened to the music of Africa, wondering where was Africa and having a connect. Hearing the music of Mary Makiba. Hearing the music of all the different people. Emulating the sound of their voices, saying words that didn't make any sense. Oh, no, you know that, oh, no, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just, I love the sound of that. And then, me hearing about, at a later, at a later age, I was in my 20s, hearing about the sleeping blindness, the tits of fly, talking about it probably when I was 23, 24, somewhere, talking about how I love to go to Ghana to help to make a difference of those that had sleeping blindness. Envisioning me being there. And then, in the 90s, amazingly coming to Ghana for the first time. And wow, it felt like home. It felt as if I had been there. It felt like I remember the essence of it like I remember the essence of when I was born. That essence I, I felt again. It's like I knew the people. And so I just want to let you all know, no different than since the beginning of my life, I knew that Stevie Wonder was a vehicle that God gave me to use my spirit, Stephen Morris, to do things to make the world better. And so know that I am too a citizen of this country. My goal is to bring people together. In a time when there is division all over the world, I'm believing that the call is for us all to come together. To give voice to the voiceless. To give peace in those places where there is war. Where children are dying, where mothers and children are starving to death. That is not in God's plan. Never. I was so fortunate to, while coming here, 
having the chance to experience the uh, the story, the documentary of President Jimmy Carter. And I know that he different than a lot of those before and after him. His desire was to do what was right. Not necessarily what was politically or popular, but to do what was right. And this is where I know we have to be. And um, no, we're going to have a conversation. This is just a conversation, and then there will be questions. You will get your opportunity to ask the questions you want to ask. But um, we have Michelle McKinney Hammond, who is a, a author of many, many books, many, I mean, over 40, a uh, lot of them bestsellers. Um, uh, when uh, Stevie Swart got off the plane today, I think when she saw Michelle, she recognized them from some of her books. She's a well-known author. And um, and we have here what Stevie is. So we're going to talk from different aspects of the diaspora. Because we tell Michelle, Ivy Michelle has a prayer sister in Los Angeles, California. And then I found out her father was Ghanaian, and she's Ghanaian and Caribbean. Rocky, who is Ghana's uh, legendary reggae uh, singer, I, the first person and still the person to be uh, nominated for Grammy Awards, etc., and he's uh, been with the Facet Innocent spokesperson, so we have him around the world. And then we have um, myself, I'm a Kusia, blessed to be the um, daughter of the former Prime Minister of Ghana, and I was raised everywhere because we were a political exile, so my first school was Holland, and then Mexico, etc., and then we have Mr. Steve Lamaris. So we are here to represent black people from all over. <laughs> and we really, we really just want to hear Steve Lamb talk. So we're here as your uh, provokers and your pronouns. So really, this is an opportunity to hear from the man himself. So. Such an introduction. <laughs> I, again, as I always do, give all praise to God for for life. This is a it's a dream that I knew would happen in reality. I didn't know when or how. I know Japan then I knew that the King Holiday in the United States celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday as a national holiday. A day that we remember the lives of all that have lived and died for the oneness of all people, as did he, and as did many people. As a little boy at five years old and six years old when I heard about this man who was going around trying to make things better for black people and wanting for the rights for all people to be recognized and respected. Equality. As I remember as a little child, boy, when I was growing up, and I listened to the music of Africa, wondering where was Africa and having a connect. Hearing the music of Mary Makiba. Hearing the music of all the different people. Emulating the sound of their voices, saying words that didn't make any sense. Oh, well, you know that, well, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just, I love the sound of that. And then me hearing about at a, late, at a later age, I was in my twenties, hearing about the sleeping blindness, the tits of life. Talking about it 
probably when I was 23, 24, somewhere, talking about how I love to go to Ghana to help to make a difference of those that had sleeping blindness. Envisioning me being there. And then, in the 90s, amazingly, coming to Ghana for the first time. And wow, it felt like home. It felt as if I had been there. It felt like I remember the essence of it like I remember the essence of when I was born. That essence I, I felt again. Knew the people. And so I just want to let you all know no different than since the beginning of my life, I knew that Stevie Wonder was a vehicle that God gave me to use my spirit, Stephen Morris, to do things to make the world better. And so know that I am too a citizen of this country. My goal is to bring people together. In a time when there is division all over the world, I'm believing that the call is for us all to come together. To give voice to the voiceless. To give peace in those places where there is war, where children are dying, where mothers and children are starving to death. That is not in God's plan. Never. I was so fortunate to, while coming here, having a chance to experience the uh, the story, the documentary of President Jimmy Carter. And I know that he, different than a lot of those before and after him, his desire was to do what was right. Not necessarily what was politically or popular, but to do what was right. And this is where I know we have to be. This time still on my way here, I was sitting in traffic, I was late, but I knew that I was on time. Because what happened this morning, Stevie, I saw Stevie not very long ago, in, uh, in LA during the Bob Marley, uh, the launch of the Bob Marley movie. And just within years, I was like, I gotta come to Ghana. Because I knew that he has been waiting for the right time to come here and make a day like this happen. But what happened this morning was also for me a manifestation of the dreams of our fathers. Because our founding fathers envisaged a moment when our continent will stretch forth its hands and reach out to our brothers and sisters out in the diaspora so that Africa can have that rebirth that is important for our way forward. And this rebirth is something that is will happen among the people, but you will also be driven by the power of music and culture. There is nobody who has embodied this ideal in a way that is transgenerational, transformative, spiritual, and every on every level than the man who sits in our presence today. And for me, Stevie represented that energy. 
He represented the possibility of Africa. He represented the possibility of the unity of us with our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. It's like a wheel. Parts were missing, but we needed a part so that we can roll into the future. And I believe the symbolism of Stevie's citizenry is not Stevie. The symbolism is about the new Africa. It's about the new Africa where we are taking the power that God has bestowed upon us. Rich resources, a strong teaming youth, an amazing opportunity to redefine the character of humanity. And also an amazing opportunity to lead the world. But we can only lead the world if we lead the world in love. If we lead the world, the world with a vision of bringing everybody together. Because I believe that Africa's unity, Africa's way forward, is not going to be one of going to other nations and trying to dominate other nations. But it will be one of Mother Africa's spirit, a nurturing spirit that elevates everybody who is part of this family of humanity. So, as a musician, today, sitting in the room, taking in the energy, looking around me, and knowing that right here, in the middle of the world, as everybody sees, calls Ghana. There was a miracle that was happening. A miracle that for years everybody has recognized that Ghana, big, big, big events, big, big transformation events always are catalyzed by this country. And CV citizenship, I was just telling him that it's everywhere. So all our brothers and sisters in the diaspora right now are looking and seeing that. The beacon of the future of our continent, our people, has been lit. And from now onwards, we go forward as one people. We go forward in unity. We go forward with the promise that we have within us. The promise of our possibility. And I feel that the light of this generation is now shining on. So we give thanks to God for Stevie coming this morning and being a Ghanaian. So Stevie Wanda, with my heart, with my soul, with my spirit, on behalf of every Ghanaian, I say Akwaba, Yumiya. Thank you very much. Baby. So that's why when he sent me a picture, he was in the hospital with the baby. But I believe that it's the beginning of great things. And I'm excited about what his being here represents and also what it starts. I can't wait to be in on all of that. Well, I am going to, yes, I'm in. And I'm going to let Stevie address that and also we'll have some questions. And so while we're doing that, if I can get help, because I have a special huge thank you, because he flew out here also for the opening of a film that is premiering tomorrow at the Silverberg uh, uh, Cinemas, all the screens. Um, uh, and so we'll hear a little bit about that. Michelle's in that class, and I want my other class members, if we can help them get chairs close up while Stevie addresses that. Can I get some help to have the other chairs? I have one of them like this. Very much, uh, like here, uh, this is the beginning on and a privilege to be amongst uh, the world's uh, greatest artists. Uh, and much, uh, oh, I, my head is getting bigger than yours. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, I looked up to your generation uh, for inspiration and motivation to be an artist. And, to be on this platform today with the likes of Rocky and yourself. And of course, yeah, uh, it's also a dream come true. And to wake up this morning to find out that you are now the <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm waiting for you to have your first bowl of tea. tea. <laughs> <laughs> I remember meeting you with Nicosia back in the 90s when you first came. And uh, so it's, it's, it's an amazing uh, to, to see you once again. Um, I got a call about the movie uh, from Nicosia. I'm like, I've idolized her all my life because watching her, we do have many role models uh, in film. Um, we have the city portiers that we looked up to, uh, the, the Giacomo Asanti, of Desmond, uh, Peter Mensa, you know, and uh, a couple of other Ghanaian artists. And seeing Akosia as a young child actress was like I've seen my own, you know, and that kind of motivated us. And as I sit here today, when you mentioned the role that I played in Spectre Miliato, I have absolutely no idea back then how much we impacted the lives of so many people in this country. So I can't imagine how you, Steve, and Rocky, and Akosia have impacted the lives of so many people around the world. And we should never, ever, ever take it for granted. So it is only by grace that I see myself here sitting amongst the greats. And uh, I hope that you will come to watch this movie. Uh, when she called, uh, I was told it was a Christian movie, and I kind of scratched my head and I kind of said, well, uh, uh, that's not for me. But how on earth could you refuse the amazing Atosia Bootsia? It was impossible. And so today I find myself here with you. I'm truly grateful, truly honored, and uh, truly humble. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good to you, my my mom. But um, we, we did a we did a screening of the film, and the people were talking about it, not knowing she was my daughter, which was fantastic. They talked about the the, the profession of that young girl. So. This, this is Hannah, she's in the film. <laughs> she's in the film. And she didn't say, people didn't know she was my daughter, but she is my daughter, thoroughly. And that's um, Hannah Busia Singleton. So, Hannah, say a little bit about yourself, your goddaddy, all of this. I'm very shy. <laughs> but this is a very special day to witness for me and to be a part of, so I shall push you my shyness. Um, seeing you receive citizenship today was very emotional. Um, from as long as I can remember, you've been visiting Ghana, championing Ghana, wearing Ghanaian clothes, you know, enjoying Ghanaian music, and appearing in Accra to just brighten up my summer since I was a child. And um, I think. We'll speak about it later, how much this day has meant to me, but what was really beautiful is seeing the two birthday boys <laughs> sitting in the front row and having the dancers, they were saying, you've done well, you've done well. And she, they were saying your name and they were saying, you've done well, you know, like you've done all. And it, I was very emotional at this moment because I thought it was beautiful. And the fact that the ceremony ended with welcome home, that was just so special, and I'm so, so honored to be present for it, and I'm honored that it's happened on your birthdays as well. And um, yeah, also congratulations, Magna, about Howard. Being present <laughs> for something like that this morning, and going to Howard, like this whole, all of this is a part of that, what that experience is gonna be for you. Um, as a young black man, it's just really wonderful to witness. And I know your dad is really proud of you, but we all are proud of you. Like, when we were singing for you, we really meant that from the heart. So this is gonna be wonderful. And I'm so happy to have you guys here. I wish it was longer, but you'll come back again, especially since your dad is a citizen now. So <laughs> you guys can definitely come back. But anyway, cinemas, and uh, we would like you to be there at seven because uh, 
uh, Stevie will be there, Rocky will be there, I think. Uh, definitely on this side, the cast will be there, Ajete will be there, uh, Michelle will be there, we'll be there, we'll be talking about the movie, answering questions about the movie, and you'll see it all plastered over. Um, very excited about it, as I, I said, it was, it's called In Search of a Blessed Life, He That Hath. And it was inspired by a book by Bishop Dad Hewitt Mills, which uh, just takes that Bible phrase of, he that hath shall have more, and he that does not have. And so we look at that, it's the story of two brothers and the separate ways that they go. And I was happy to hear him say his, you know, feeling, because not everyone, when you say the word Christian film, there are some people who really want to see it and some people who really, really don't. And that has been one of my passions is that not to have films where if it's a Christian film, you feel you'll be good if you see it, but you wish you could see the other films. You know, because we have the ideas of the world closest to us. And so I was looking for a Christian film that it, you don't sit there and go Christian film, but you have ideas that come into, which is why great actors like this who, they don't have to, you know, necessarily come in to make a Christian film. A Christian film is just a film about people. And I don't like films where you see it, that person's bad, that person's good, he's evil. Because if life was like that, most of us would not sin or make any mistakes. But the, the challenge is even being able to tell the shades. And that's what I pray we've done in this film that you'll see tomorrow. So I hope you'll all be there. So we're at cinemas at 7 p.m. tomorrow. So yes. And I'm not going to tell you too much about it. That is what it is. It's the, it's the journey of two brothers. They both graduate. And they both want to be, in a way, he that have. But how do they get it? So, he, yes. This is this is my the father of one of, of the boys. And he says, I'm telling too much. And, I, and I, I know enough to obey my thoughts. So that's all we get. Not another word more from me. It's juicy. <laughs>